Hi, my name is Rich McHugh, and I manage the Digital Scholarship Commons in the library, where, among other things, we help students, faculty, and staff learn to create accessible scholarly communications to tell their research stories in ways beyond text. Just to give you a little bit of background, in the Digital Scholarship Commons, we offer free hands-on introductory skills workshops for digital tools like data visualization in our studio, video editing, infographics, augmented and virtual reality, 3D design, as well as some hardware-based workshops for 3D printers and electronics kits. We also teach these workshops for in four credit classes at the invitation of professors, typically in the support of a new assignment. The fundamental problem that we'll be addressing today is how can we as instructors provide high quality support for software-based skill development in an online environment similar to what we're accustomed to providing in face-to-face -face classes or labs. And by software-based, I mean any software package or web application that can be run on a computer screen. Up until March, the way we taught all of our workshops in the Digital Scholarship Commons was a blend of online and face-to-face -face instruction. The online instruction consisted of pre-class videos and readings to prepare the students for taking part in hands-on activities during face-to-face -face class time. In our first few face-to-face -face Zoom sessions, we found two major problems. So over one weekend in March, we began updating our face-to-face -face class materials by reformatting our activity handouts to be easier to use on a computer screen. In my first few classes, students were very reluctant to ask questions in the Zoom classroom. Even students who are quite talkative in my education classroom didn't ask nearly as many questions in our virtual classroom for some reason. Secondly, once the students started working on their in-class activities, while I could see most of their faces, I was completely blind to how they were progressing with their work as I wasn't able to wander around the classroom and look over their shoulders to check in and offer help to those who are struggling like I was used to doing. Before I get into the specifics of best practices for using Zoom to support software-based skills development, let's review two other frequently used teaching methods for online skills development instruction. One alternative to Zoom would be a standard lecture format using a video conference service where the instructor demonstrates how to use the software. While this is arguably the easiest way for an instructor to teach learners how to use a software tool, it does have some significant drawbacks. First, everyone in the class has to learn at the pace that the instructor is teaching. For some, that will be too fast and they'll get behind. If the instructor slows down to the speed of the slowest learner, then the pace will be too slow for most of the class. In the traditional lecture format, there's typically little learner choice as the class follows along with the instructor's demonstration. Hopefully, there will be enough time after the lecture for hands-on time so that students can learn by doing, which is generally more engaging and effective than learning by watching. On the positive side, for a lecture, instructors who lecture are available to answer questions during the lecture and during any active learning time that remains. A second option to Zoom would be to move to a completely asynchronous instructional model traditionally used by online classes where students work through the materials at their own pace without any real-time interactions with their classmates or instructors. Asynchronous classes are typically very flexible and usually desirable for students who work or who have family responsibilities. Online discussion boards can also facilitate peer-to-peer -peer interactions to explore concepts, however, typically don't offer real-time interaction or support for students who have immediate questions that need to be answered in order to progress through a learning assignment. This makes the traditional discussion board less useful for technical skill development. While some struggling can be helpful in the learning process, skill building activities that student finds 
too challenging without just-in-time support can be demotivating and a barrier to learning. The online option we chose for our skills development classes in the Digital Scholarship Commons was an active learning Zoom classroom in an attempt to replicate as much as possible our hands-on face-to-face classroom or lab experience with just-in-time support for students. The first few minutes of our classes are spent introducing the topic, orienting students to the activities, and pointing out supports available to them both during and after class. Supports and guides are especially helpful for students who, for whatever reason, didn't complete all of the pre-class activities or struggle with learning software skills. We try to provide students with a range of activities in order to give students as much choice as possible. This also allows them to start working on an activity that challenges them, but does not overwhelm them and then they can work through as many activities as they need to master the skills that they will need to successfully complete the course assignments. Allowing students to choose what activity they want to start with also allows them to move at their own pace, whether that be fast or slow. There is no forced march through the curriculum, which for some is overwhelmingly fast and others tediously slow. Lastly, and very importantly, we provide learners with just-in-time support and guidance from an expert instructor or teaching assistant, either at their request or if we notice someone struggling, we'll offer to help them. The just-in-time support was the most difficult aspect of our classroom-based labs to replicate in Zoom because of students' reluctance to ask questions and our initial inability to unobtrusively check on them and see how they're doing, which in a physical classroom meant looking over their shoulders. So which Zoom features support active learning in an online environment? The most helpful Zoom feature that I use that no other major video platform currently offers is simultaneous desktop sharing. This enables us to unobtrusively check in with our students' progress and provide just-in-time support in a very similar way to what we're accustomed to doing in our physical classroom. At the beginning of each class, I spend a few minutes introducing and orienting students to the software skills to be learned. And then after that, I quickly walk through the class how to share their computer screen so that I can more easily check in with them. I also talk about how helpful this is to me as an instructor and to them as a learner in an online classroom. I've not made desktop sharing mandatory during the hands-on activities in my education classes, but almost all the students share their screens with me after I explain how it can help them. Once everyone is engaged in hands-on activities, I check in with my students by toggling through their shared screens. For small problems, I might address the whole class and say that I've noticed an issue and then tell everyone how to solve the problem as I watch the screen of the person with the problem go about fixing it. This way, I can see if my explanation is clear enough for the student to fix it. If a student asks for help for a complex problem, either via voice or chat, and I don't think any other students are experiencing a similar problem, I'll ask the student if they'd like to go to a private breakout room to get some help. This allows me to help the student without distracting others in the Zoom room. Once in the breakout room, I verbally walk them through how to solve the problem. Occasionally, I'll ask the student to give me control of their desktop to do some testing or to show them solution, the solution, but I only do this as a last resort as students learn better and more effectively if they fix the problem themselves please keep in mind that I usually have a teaching assistant to monitor the main classroom while I'm in a breakout room. So, what are some of the limitations of Zoom for software skills development? Well, first off, without extra hardware, we can't use Zoom effectively for our electronics classes or labs. One way around this would be to purchase inexpensive cameras on a flexible arm so that students could share what they were working on with their electronics kits. 
These cameras cost about $80, however they're currently in short supply. I've also found that if in the middle of the class I want to demonstrate something by sharing my own screen, students have to stop sharing their screens in order to see what I'm doing. In my experience with Digital Scholarship Commons workshops, many students won't start sharing their screens again after the instru instructor demonstration. In an ongoing class where students are used to sharing their screens and are familiar with the process, this shouldn't be as big a problem as it is in our drop-in workshops. Some students aren't comfortable knowing that their peers could be looking at their screens during class lab time. While students could just look over their shoulders at their screen in a face-to-face -face classroom, in Zoom they would have no idea that someone was watching them at any given time. There's two solutions I've found to get around this. One, before the class starts, especially at the beginning of the semester, I welcome each student to the class as they arrive and chat with them in order to build a rapport. And this seems to help them become more comfortable sharing. Two, if everyone in the classroom is sharing their screens, then only the instructor can see the student screens being shared. That said, one idea I've toyed with for next semester is to make it mandatory for everyone to share their screens during lab activities. I'm gonna do a survey of my class in early September to get a feel for how my students would feel about this. So, Zoom can help us replicate a supportive lab environment for software-based skills building activities with just-in-time assistance, rather than making students wait until the next class or office hours to get help with a skill that they're struggling with. And while Zoom isn't a perfect tool, it is paid for and supported by the university, and it's the best tool I've found for facilitating high-quality support for software-based skills development in an online environment. So please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or would like to chat. Also, if you're interested in having one of our Digital Scholarship Commons experts come into your class as a guest lecturer, uh, please just get in touch. Thank you.